Hi there, this thing here is a resistance decay from eBay. I'm wary of buying such things from eBay because you never know how badly they were treated. Quite possibly at least some of the resistors are fried to a crisp due to overload. But this one was such a good deal I decided it was worth the risk. This thing is massive, more than half a meter long, heavy and built like a tank. It has four dials for hundreds, thousands, ten thousands and hundred thousand ohms. It was made by H. W. Sullivan of London and another hard to read engraving lists the type as AC1049. Accuracy is an excellent 0.05%, if still true of course, and a nominal that is all dials to zero resistance of just 8 milliohms. Apparently the resistors are made from manganine, an alloy that is particularly good for making resistors with practically zero temperature coefficient, so these are probably wire-bound resistors, yet since the big claim is non-reactive, they would need to be wired in a special way to reduce the large inductance of normal wire-bound resistors. That's expensive and would only be done for high quality resistors. So all this is very promising and was in fact one of the reasons I decided to buy it. That this is a high quality item is further suggested by the cull sticker. It looks like this box was kept in calibration until relatively recent given its vintage status. It was obviously worthwhile doing that. And a second sticker is also good news. Ok, the 100 ohm range was found slightly worse than 0.05%, but a drop to 0.07% is no big deal for me. The good news is that since only the 100 ohm range is mentioned, the other ranges must have still met the 0.05% grade when this cull was done. Ok, it has suffered over the time. A portion of the white insulator around the black socket is gone and clearly the whole red socket is newer because it's a different type. But those are flaws I can live with if it works and so let's find out how it performs. I am using the vintage but still accurate 1905A multimeter for this test of a vintage resistance decay. The video is sped up because it's pretty boring. Everything is spot on so far. Oops, going from 0 to 1 on the 10,000 ohms but I don't see 10k. Going to position 2 shows 10k, 3 shows 20k and so on. It looks as if everything is shifted by 10k but otherwise in order. So something is wrong after all, but let's continue the test first. The knob for the 100,000s is going heavily and it does not seem to find the correct positions as easy as the others. I guess a mechanical problem because it might have seen less use. But once the correct position is found, the values are correct. Let's open it up to see what's inside and look for the reasons why the 10k range is off by 1 and the 100k range so hard to turn. There are a lot of screws holding the front plate. And lifting the front plate is almost as heavy as the whole box. Wow, what a sight. Just look at this. I find this a truly breathtaking sight. A work of art. Different resistors hanging on the massive switches, the higher values standing in neat columns. All this was obviously made by hand and assembled and soldered by hand. You just don't find stuff like this anymore. I think I can just look at this forever admiring how it was put together with such attention to detail. Massive brass switch contacts, it must have cost a fortune when this was new. The short arm slides on the inner press disc and the long arm moves from position to position. Right now the switch is in the zero position and the arm connects the two massive copper bands that form the connection to the next switch. You can see how the slider moves from position to position when I move the knob. In fact, including the zero there are exactly 11 positions it can move before mechanically stopped. But hang on a moment. This switch has 21 positions and the one in the lower half clearly show traces that the slider moved over them too. And what do you know, the switch has indeed a second scale that was covered by a movable plate and when that is moved, the switch for 100 ohms is revealed to be also usable for 100 of ohms or 0.01 ohm. And all this is of course true for all the other switches too. 
All it takes is to flip the covers and so the 1K ohm switch becomes the 1 tenth ohm switch, the 10K switch becomes a 1 ohm switch and the 100K switch does the 10 ohms. This box covers not 4 but 8 decades. I totally did not know that when I bought it and I doubt very much the seller knew. This explains why one side of the most right switch has 10 times 100 ohm resistors hanging on it while on the other side has these interesting loops that each form a 10 milli ohm resistor. By the way, these show clearly how these switches work. There are 10 blue resistors of value R1, each one is connected between two neighboring small brass discs. I only show four resistors here. The knob is in position 3. This means from where the connection to the center disc is on the upper right, through the pickup, over the turning knob axle and down to the arm, we have three identical resistors R1 in series before the current leaves the selector knob. That's how this works. At position 10 we have all 10 resistors in series, while at position 0 the current goes out directly with no resistor in between. The zero position is shared between the upper and the lower halves of the switch. So with all this in mind, consider the case of the 10K knob. It reads zero on the zero position, which is fine, but also on the number one position, while from then on everything is okay, except all positions are 10K too low. It is very likely that the first R1 is shortened somehow. That would fully explain the observed behavior. But before trying to find the short, I want to test the lower positions in case there are more problems. I am starting with a 10 ohm position on the most left and having nulled the leads to the meter which it shows with the N symbol on the right of the display. For this I should really have used one of my meters that can do 4 wire measurements but this is just a first quick test. Especially at the 1 tenth ohm and 100th ohm setting, the 1905A struggles a bit but it looks as if there are no other problems and it's time to fix the 10K issue. Doing some testing and observing the switch, sorry about the focus, that thing is so big I can't have everything in focus at the same time. The fix was surprisingly easy. The blank wire connecting the first of the 1 ohm resistors had touched the return of the first 10K resistor. Maybe this diagram explains it better. The 10K resistors are all mounted in nice columns standing on the front plate and connected by blank wires to the switch. The 1 ohm resistors are hanging on their blank wires. Somehow the body of the first 1 ohm resistor was bent inwards a bit and close enough to the return wire of the first 10K so that the wires touched, effectively shortening the 0 and first 10K position with each other. Bending the 1 ohm slightly away fixed the problem. To wrap up, remember the non-reactive claim? If you look carefully, you can see that the wires on the resistors are not just wound like a coil, but cross each other. It is easiest to see on these low ohm resistors. There's a Wikipedia article on wire-bound resistors you may want to have a look at, link in the description. According to the article, it seems to be ayrton perry winding producing specially low values of parasitic inductance and parasitic capacitance and used for resistors in radio frequency applications. And speaking of resistors, there's evidence that some maintenance or calibration was going on, in some cases with more modern foil resistors being added, in other cases they are more mundane. And finally, with respect to the mechanical problems, especially the 100K switch, a generous helping of WD-40 into the bearing together with exercising the switch a lot made it as good as new. I actually did that for all the switches, just in case. I leave you with more pictures from the amazing insight of this decade which has become my favorite way of testing resistances from 0 0.01 ohm to 1 meg ohm. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe. There are more projects, repairs and reviews coming up. And it would be great if you decided becoming a Patreon, that would really help this channel. Thanks for watching.